Hello and welcome to Dear Franny Podcast. I'm your host, Francesca Hoagie. I hope that you are doing well. This is such a season of change and transition um, for for myself personally, but for it seems like everyone I know. Um, so if you are going through that right now in your life, whether it's personal, professional, or both, which seems to be the case as well for a lot of people, um, how are you doing? How, how are you, how are you coping with all the changes? Because, um, I think I'm doing okay, but then I'm also like, I don't know, maybe I'm in denial, (laughs) but if I am in denial, I need to stay there a little bit longer because, um, 2024 is coming to a close, but there's still a lot going on and a lot, um, that I have to do and that we all have to do and the holidays are coming and, Lots of travel is happening. So I guess I'm just starting this this episode out to say, you know, be gentle with yourself and make sure that you are taking the time that you need. You're getting the rest that you need because it's it's serious. This, these changes that we're all going through um, and we're going to get through it. And I do think the changes are for the better, I should add. Um, but even when change is wanted in your life, it doesn't mean that it's easy, right? So um, if you can relate, I hope this encourages you a little bit. Um, Okay. So as you know, one of the big things that's been going on for me this year is that I've been writing my book, How to Find True Love, which will be out on April 8th, 2025. And um, I know I was saying March before, but that was me not checking with my publisher, the updated release date, which is April 8th. And, um, I hit send this weekend, just a few days ago on my, on my final pass at the manuscript. Like these are my final edits. And, um, so I'm done writing the book and I feel like I birthed a, a being into the world. And now I, um, I'm going to talk about it a lot and show a lot of people, show it off to a lot of people and, um, also I, I have to be responsible for it for the rest of my life, um, <laughs> which I'm ready for, but again, it's a lot, you know, changes are good and hitting milestones, you know, so exciting, but also crazy and scary at the same time. Okay. So <laughs> now that I've gotten that out of my system, um, what I wanted to talk about today is something that has been coming up with a lot of people recently. I've had a number of friends um, and not so many clients, but more friends and just people that I've been talking to who who were in this season of feeling a bit frustrated about dating. Um, but beyond that, the question that's been coming up specifically is, is it okay to date casually while I'm actually seeking a long-term committed partnership? And The answer to that question is not, it's not a one size fits all answer. And um, so what I realized that it was time for me to revisit here on the podcast was, uh, or is the dating archetypes, the four dating archetypes that I created, because I think that understanding your archetype gives very good context to answering this and other types of questions, because um, you might be at a place in your dating journey where You actually like dating casually is it's it works for you because even though you have a an overarching goal of having this committed partnership, you're at a place right now where you maybe you need to get some more confidence or a little bit more experience or you just need to have some, you know, some intimacy or some sexual energy to kind of just help to awaken you and recharge you. Um, So it could be really good in that situation. But conversely, if you are dating casually because you are making assumptions that, oh, it's going to, you know, it'll be so hard for me to meet someone. I might as well just have fun while I can. Now you're getting into the territory of where you're, you're getting into your beliefs. You're getting into really splitting your energy and your focus between what you want and what you're sort of settling for in the moment. So to help you understand a little bit more about where you are in your journey and how this question applies to you, but also just more generally sort of what your actual 
love assignment is at this moment because it's different for different people. So I'm just going to assume again for this conversation that the overarching goal is a true love partnership, okay? Um, but the path to that is not gonna look the same for everyone. All right, so if you are not familiar with my four dating archetypes, I encourage you to go to francescahoge.com slash resources where you can take a free, it's a free multiple choice quiz that's going to tell you your dating archetype. Um, there's also links to that quiz in my bios on social, you know, I'm at Dear Franny on Instagram and all those places. Um, but to give you an overview of the four archetypes. So the reason that I created these, these archetypes was after years of doing this work and working with so many singles, talking to so many singles, listening to so many singles, it became very clear to me that everyone was sort of in one of these four sort of phases um, or buckets during their, their dating journey. And um, I always like to preface this by saying that your dating archetype is not your destiny. This is not, you know, necessarily forever where you're going to be. I mean, unless you want to be um, or unless you just decide you're fine with where you are and, you know, whether you actively want to be there or you're just sort of reluctant to break out of this phase, it doesn't matter. No judgments, but it just, I just want to make it clear that this is not like an indictment or, um, and they're, they're not bad, but this is just not saying like, this is who you are, right? Um, I think there's enough ways in which we pathologize ourselves. I'm not trying to add to that. I'm just trying to add a helpful tool. So love confidence. This is a, this is a concept that you have heard me talk about on the podcast before. And love confidence is essentially your belief in your ability to handle romantic love. Everything from the confidence in finding a great partner, you know, and picking a great partner and knowing how to build a, a lasting relationship of navigating the ups and downs in relationships of knowing, you know, if a relationship ends that you, you can still go out and meet someone else who is a great partner for you and that your next relationship will be better than your last. So it's really just having this full confidence in yourself and your ability to handle romantic love. Now, for many reasons that um, are not our fault, <laughs> um, and some of them are societal, some of them have to do with your personal experience, um, but we have different levels of confidence, right? And that's how all confidence works. Confidence is always on a spectrum. It always fluctuates. You can strengthen your confidence. You can have times in your life where you're feeling very confident. You can have times in your life where you're feeling less so. So love confidence is the same way. Um, but when I look at this love confidence spectrum, it just became very clear to me that these four, there are these four different phases that people tend to occupy along that spectrum. And those are the archetypes. So what are the archetypes? So the first on the lower love confidence end of the spectrum is the avoider and avoiders are my people. Um, I am a recovered avoider, but I have, I, I, I know so well what it is to be in this phase. Um, and avoiders, the name really says it all that avoiders avoid dating. They avoid dating. They often avoid talking about dating. They often avoid, um, even letting people know that a romantic relationship is something that they're interested in. Um, you know, I used to, when I worked with clients, especially when I was still matchmaking, I would talk to the people in my clients' lives, obviously with their permission, they would say, these are the people that you can talk to. Um, and I would get feedback because um, this is something that my my mentor, Paul C. Brunson, this, is, this was something that he did at his agency. And so I learned this from him because I worked with him. I worked for him as his lead matchmaker and coach. And it was such a helpful practice that I brought it into my own business, which is getting this real 360 sort of unbiased 360 assessment of where our clients were, because it's one thing for a person to say, oh yeah, A, B, C, and D, but for their best friend and their sister or their parents, or, you know, to say, well, actually, you know, um, <laughs> they're at X, Y, Z. Uh, you have to take with a grain of salt, but it was still very helpful. But one of the things that was always so striking to me, uh, because a lot of, we were often hired by people who were avoiders, right? So people who didn't date and but they wanted to, they wanted partnership, um, they wanted, you know, committed partnership. And I would talk to people in their lives. And so often I would hear the comment, 
I had no idea that they even wanted a relationship. Like this is like, I'm, I'm, I'm so surprised they're working with you. I'm so excited they're working for you, but they never talk about it. I just assumed that this wasn't anything that they were interested in. Really, really common. Um, so that is something that um, if you can relate, just know that you're not alone. Um, and I'll go, I'm going to go kind of quickly through each of the four phases and then I'll go back and give a little bit of advice for each phase. So those are voiders. And the other thing to say about avoiders is that you really tend to be the whole package. Like you're actually really amazing. You're, you know, you're a really amazing person and you don't fully understand or see how amazing you are. And, um, and you combine that with feeling like, oh, it's maybe it's been so long or I don't even know how to get started or maybe I've never really dated or I haven't dated in decades or years or what have you. There's a lot of story that can make people get stuck in this phase when they don't want to be. Okay, next is the looper. So loopers are, are in a place where you are stuck in a pattern that just keeps repeating and you don't know how to get out of it. It's just like this loop that you're that you're stuck in. I describe it as your love life, your dating life feeling like groundhog day. And so the same thing just keeps happening and you're stuck and you're frustrated and you don't know how to break out of this cycle. So loopers are really, I mean the great thing about loopers is that, you know, and I've also been in this phase. By the way, I should say, you don't have to be in every phase. You can like skip phases, but I just had to do it all you know, I think it was divine. So I could really understand all of the different journeys. I can understand, um, I can relate to people, you know, really and all different parts of their, of their dating journeys and dating experiences. So, um, so I've been in, I've been a looper, you know, I've been stuck in that phase. I mean, actually I used to be an avoider. And when I stepped, when I stepped into dating, I kind of went right into looping, which is another thing that can happen. Um, doesn't have to, but it did for me and it does for a lot of people. And so when I was in this looper phase, I was at a place of getting dates, but then the dates weren't going anywhere. You know, I was getting a first date, but I wasn't getting asked out on a second date. Maybe sometimes I was getting asked on a second date, but definitely not a third date. So I was just stuck in this, like, I was going on these dates and they seemed fine. And it seemed like we were getting along and we were having nice conversation, but then there was no spark. There was no chemistry. And so that was the first, um, that was the first pattern that I had to break. So if you are in a looping phase right now, just know that this is not your destiny. Um, this is a pattern that you have to break. And also give yourself credit for the fact that you are still trying. You are still putting yourself out there. You are still, um, even if it's not 100% effective at this point, you are still um, giving yourself that chance to learn and to grow and to evolve and to get some more clarity and understanding about what is actually keeping you in this phase. And then after loopers, we have surfers. So surfers, oh, I love surfers. <laughs> surfers are like true romantics. Surfers are really, really good at chemistry. Surfers are the ones who, you know, you meet someone, you have that instant connection and you just, you just go for it. You know, it's like the wave comes in and you just grab your board and you just go for it. You throw caution to the wind and the kind of the mistake that a lot of surfers make is mistaking that heat and that chemistry with compatibility, with long-term compatibility. And so I have seen this time and time again, where many surfers, it's like every time they meet someone and they have that connection, they're like, this person is the one. And, you know, that per and then they'll have this intense relationship and it might only last a few weeks. It might only last a few months. It might be one that keeps coming back around. Like it's that X that, you know, you just can't quit. You can't quit. You just have that, that intensity. And every time you see each other again, it reignites it. And now you're back riding this wave of chemistry. Um, and it can be very exciting and it can be very passionate, but it can also be very, um, over time, it can really ding your confidence because you know, you have the ability to have these connections and to meet people and have this chemistry. However, you don't have the confidence to know how to parlay that or translate that into um, a longer term committed relationship. And then last, but certainly not least, we have sailors. And so sailors are really in control of their love journey, meaning sailors are the type of people when they say, I'm ready for a relationship, bam, they're in a relationship. 
And I used to look at sailors and like, how do they do that? Because especially back when I was in my avoider phase, I'm like, I can't even imagine what it's like to have that much agency, have that much um, power to just like manifest a relationship when you want it. But that's what sailors can do. Now, it does not mean that sailors have always manifested the the best relationships or the relationships that are the most true to who they are. So it's almost, it can, it sounds like, oh, everybody wants to be a sailor. And yes, you do in the sense that you do want to have that agency, but you also want to make sure that um, you're not just getting into relationships because you're so good at just just falling into a commitment with every per- new person that you meet. And before you know it, you're like, oh yeah, I'm in a relationship again. Um, so, um, and actually, even though I, I talk about this love confidence spectrum from avoider to sailor as this, you know, the, it almost, you know, like this linear path, um, it's not linear, right? Because people can zigzag, um, but it's also actually can be a circle, because I have worked with a lot of avoid, um, a lot of surfers. I mean, excuse me. I've worked with a lot of sailors who have, after many years of being in maybe one committed relationship or multiple committed relationships. I mean, I've heard from so many people things like, "I haven't been single since I was 16 years old, and I don't even know what I want anymore, or I don't even know the kind of partner that's actually right for me. I only know what I've." just always done, which is be in relationships. Um, And so sometimes when sailors get out of a relationship and they see this pattern, they can, they can feel like, oh, well, I don't, now I don't know what to do because I, every person that I've chosen has, I don't want that relationship in the future. And so I've seen sailors actually kind of go into an avoider phase where now they're just like, I don't actually want to date because I don't, want to get into another relationship unless it's the right relationship. And I'm not sure how to do that. So everyone is on their journey and everyone has different assignment, right? Based on where you are. So let's go back to avoiders. So your assignment as an avoider is really to stop avoiding, right? And so what does that look like for you? It might look like you're actually starting to practice the vulnerability because vulnerability, it's a muscle, right? We can strengthen it of telling some trusted people in your life that, you know, you're actually ready for, you're ready for a relationship. You're ready to start dating. You're ready to put yourself out there. And, um, and you could even ask for their support. You can work with a coach, you can do all sorts of things. But the great thing about being in an avoider phase is like, as soon as you stop avoiding, you're no longer avoiding. (laughs) Right. Um, and so going back to this question that's been coming up about, is it okay to date casual when I'm looking for something serious? Now, even when you're dating casual, no matter what phase you're in, you still want to have a baseline of you're casually dating people who are respectful, who are kind, right? Who, um, you know, who treat you well and all of those things. I should add that casual, um, you know, I don't care if it's a one night stand for one night, let that person be treat like treat you well. Right. Um, but for avoiders, sometimes casual dating, it doesn't have to mean sex necessarily, but it can, of course, um, casual dating can be good because you are like, you're, you're getting used to dating. You're flexing that muscle. And I actually see a lot of avoiders when they're ready to like stop avoiding they kind of jump so far ahead. Like now they're like, okay, I want to meet my, I want to meet my husband. I want to meet my wife. And it's like, okay, that's great. And you could, but also you have to understand that dating gives you actual love skills, relationship skills that serve you. So rather than being too quick to say, I need to just meet somebody and get into a relationship. If you have not dated in a long time, or you have not dated at all, give yourself a chance to actually just explore what it means for you to be your, what, how you show up romantically and what it means, how do you make connections? How do you discern who's a good match for you? You know, what does it look like for you to be in this open hearted phase of your, of your dating journey where you are actually, you know, allowing connection to come in, you're allowing yourself to be vulnerable, you're strengthening all of these skills, whether it's flirting and all of these different things. And so I really encourage you, if you are in this avoider phase to give yourself, a, you know, really, and this is for everyone. I really like three month goals because they're manageable, but they're not. So, you know, it's, 
it's not so much time that you kind of give yourself a break because you're like, oh, I've got, you know, I've got months to do this. It's like, well, I only have three months. So I do kind of have to get started, but it's also still long enough to see some progress. So I would recommend if you are for everyone just to say, okay, where am I right now in my dating journey? What do I want it to look like three months from now? And set yourself up to win with this, right? So if you're like, I haven't been on a date ever, three months from now, I want to be engaged is not setting yourself up to win, right? But three months from now, you know, I feel comfortable dating. I, you know, I've gone on dates and I realize like, oh, this is something I can do. I feel more comfortable flirting. I feel more comfortable um, receiving romantic attention. Like set yourself up to win in your goals. So this is for you, my avoiders. Don't jump too many steps ahead, but also recognize that you can go on dates with people that you don't that you don't anticipate will be your forever person. Because again, this is a muscle that you are, that you are flexing and you also don't know who your forever person is anyway. So I say this and you could go on one date and be like, Oh yeah, I'm just going on this date to like, you know, to just put myself out there and practice dating. And then you fall in love that can happen. (laughs) But, uh, but what I'm really talking about is really approaching dating as a really valuable exercise that's going to teach you the skills that you need to build that relationship that lasts over time, which is what you're ultimately seeking. So that's my advice for avoiders. That's your assignment is to stop avoiding. For loopers, your assignment is to take a step back. And this is where casual dating and, you know, if you, if you're in a phase of like, you know, on the one hand, you're dating people looking for a relationship, but you find yourself in a lot of hookup situations, a lot of situationships on all of that really want you to pause. And I want you to recognize that there is some more self-awareness that needs to happen in order for you to get past this phase. And so that self-awareness, so this is your assignment is starting to say, okay, what are the ways in which I am contributing to this pattern that I do, that I no longer want? Now, this is something, of course, and this is for everyone. And I can't believe I haven't said this already because normally I'm a broken record about it. This is really, it's very important to ground yourself in self-compassion. So this is not a judgment of what's wrong with me or why do I keep doing this or why do I keep picking these people or I suck. Those things will not help and will only keep you stuck. So if you want to stay stuck, beat yourself up. But if you want to move on, then it's time to start practicing that kindness and just giving yourself a break and just getting curious that self-compassionate curiosity of, okay, isn't this interesting that I keep finding myself in this situation? How do, how do I, what am I prioritizing when I first meet someone? How am I showing up when I first meet someone? Am I actually being my authentic self? Am I getting caught up in appearances? Am I trying to play it cool because I quote, don't want to scare anyone off? Like these are just all questions that you have to really ask yourself honestly. And you also have to honestly, um, look at how it is impacting you to have casual hookups when you're in this phase, because Typically speaking, what that's only going to do is dent your love confidence because you're normalizing something that you don't want, which is that I can get people to date me, I can get people to hook up with me, but I can't get into a relationship. So this is a place where I would really advise you to be cautious about how much, how many casual situations you're allowing in your life and how those are really impacting you. Um, because once you start to get the awareness of how you are as we all are in every phase, you are half of the denominator in any dynamic that you're creating with another, with another person. And so raising your standards to say, actually, I'm, I'm going to only date people who can really see me for who I am, who can really appreciate me for who I am, who can articulate that they're also looking for a relationship. I can also walk away from the people who aren't looking for a relationship because I am, and I know that this is how this is impacting me. Um, So pay attention. What is that level of attachment that you're having to the people who you might be dating casually? What is the level of disruption and drama that that is bringing to your life? Um, Because a lot of people are in these situationships that are so much work and they are so dramatic and they are so emotionally taxing that I'm just like, how are you doing this to yourself? Right? Like you are in a you are in a romantic relationship with someone who is not your partner, but it's still taking all of the energy, right? So that's what I want you to be mindful of, my dear loopers. 
And as for my surfers, so my surfers, you are so good at romance and chemistry and intensity and, and, you know, being open hearted and being vulnerable. And those are beautiful things. But what my main piece of advice for you is to slow things down. Um, being a surfer really relies on an assumption that you can tell very quickly who is and who isn't the right person for you. Just like a surfer can be like, that's my wave. You're like, I saw it. It's, that's my wave. That's my person. And you have to look at, well, how many times have I said that? Right. Um, and what, what is my pattern? Because I mean, everybody has a pattern, whether you're an avoider, your pattern is avoiding your, if you're a surfer, your pattern is, is riding these waves of chemistry, um, and you can get lucky and those can turn into relationships. But as you know, if this is a phase that you are in and you've been in for a while, it can also really um, result in a lot of very harsh wipeouts and a lot of harsh breakups. And I, um, one of the things that I see a lot with surfers is having to take really big breaks after relationships because they were so... Um, you know, they, they were traumatic, they were exhausting and they, and they really have to rebuild themselves. And so I see a lot of surfers using casual dating to help rebuild themselves in that phase. And there's nothing wrong with that. However, if you're not kind of understanding the larger pattern at work, it's like, but how can you stop just jumping into relationships so quickly, making so many assumptions, start to have more confidence that you can be patient, that you can take your time getting to know someone, that you can actually make sure that you're on the same page about what you're looking for romantically. That's really what I want surfers to think about and to really do, slow it all down. And last but not least are my sailors. And so sailors you know, the same goes for you in terms of, of what of really what's for everyone, which is, okay, being very honest with yourself, well, where am I now, right? How, how, what have I been prioritizing? What are the choices that I've been making? Have I been getting into relationships my whole life out of a sense of obligation, or that's what you should do? Um, or am I actually, actually choosing people actively, or am I letting myself be chosen? I mean, that's a big pattern that I see with a lot of sailors where they just really good at, you know, telling what they can, they can just pick up when somebody has that, you know, relationship mindset. And before they know it, they're like, oh, well, they really like me. So I'm in a relationship with them. And I want you to make sure that you like the person that you're getting in a relationship with too. <laughs> um, and so casual dating for a sailor could be sort of like with an avoider, because again, it's a circle can be something that is helpful in the sense that you're getting a sense of like, okay, wait, this is actually what I like. This isn't what I like. This is, um, you know, I, 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 I see the value in, um, in, you know, looking at how I show up and the assumptions that I make and, um, and this, and, and actually having a little bit more uncertainty because I'm so used to just being like, I'm only, you know, I'm only, I don't date, I, I quote relationship, right? I don't date, I relationship. Um, and if you realize that like, oh, I need to push myself out of my comfort zone. I need to be less attached to every person I meet being the person. So doing a little bit of casual dating can help you in that regard. But, you know, as I mentioned at the beginning, whatever kind of path you decide to take here, Think of this in three month buckets, because what I see very often is people who are in this like, yeah, you know, it's okay. Like, I'm, it's okay for me to be casual while I'm looking for something. But think of, well, how long have you been in that phase? And has it been years? Are you, um, you know, I have a dear friend I had a conversation with the other day and, um, you know, she was very insistent that like, casual dating was something that she needed to do because it was going to take her a really long time to meet someone and, you know, someone serious. And so in the meantime, she wanted, she wanted intimacy, she wanted romance. And I said to her, because again, this has been years long pattern. Um, I said to her, well, you're making this assumption and you've made this decision that it's going to take you a really long time to meet someone. But what if part of why it is taking you a long time, quote, long time to meet someone is because you're not actually committed to it um, and you are getting distracted and you are allowing a lot of energy and a lot of drama into your life with people that you know are not your partner. So what is the cost to you for of doing that? 
And that's really what I want to leave you with is just to understand like you are an adult. If everybody involved is a consenting adult, you guys get to do whatever you want to do. And I do not judge you for any of it. However, I want you to be honest with yourself about how this is impacting you. And if this is impacting you in a way where you're feeling less confident that you can actually have the love that you want because you're reinforcing constantly something that you don't want, um, if it's making you feel, um, if you're if you're just being more complacent because you're like, well, you know, I don't have a partner that I want, but at least I have, you know, at least I have sex, <laughs> and I and I want that, um, and so you're getting to a, a, a sense of complacency. Are you ready to commit to actually having the love that you want? Are you ready to commit to having the relationship that you want? And if you are, and if you believed that you could have it, if you could, if you believed that an amazing partner is is waiting for you, and by the way, there's more than one, everybody gets more than one, right? So if you believe that there are amazing people out there who are waiting to meet you as well as you're waiting to meet them, then what? why not? try on leaning into, okay, how can I let myself be guided to those people and to them, to me? How can I recognize them? How can I show up differently? How can I be committed to the experience that I want? How can I be committed to growing on my love journey, right? What are the love lessons that I might not be learning, right? What do I need to get more confidence in or more experience in, more perspective in? Um, There are so many questions that, you know, when you ask yourself these questions from this place of self-compassionate curiosity can really open up so much clarity for you. And that is what I really, really, really want you to experience for yourself is just more clarity about what is in your department, what is within your control on your, on your love journey and to lean into that and not let yourself get distracted by things that ultimately aren't serving you. So Once again, if you have not yet taken the dating archetype quiz, there's links to it in all of my bios on social at Dear Franny. Um, And then also um, you can go to francescahoge.com slash resources and take the quiz. It's free. It's only 10 multiple choice questions. It'll only take you a few minutes and you will get not only your archetype, but all the archetypes. So, you know, maybe you're like, oh, I feel like maybe a little bit hybrid of a, of an avoider and a, and a looper, because um, that actually is kind of a common thing for people to go through these phases where they um, avoid dating for a really long time. And then they jump in and then they have two or three experiences that are like the same things happening over and over again. And they just kind of jump out again. Um, I see that happen a lot as well, but anyway, Take the archetype quiz. Let me know what you think. I hope that you've enjoyed this episode. I hope that you are being kind to yourself and you are weathering all of the life changes with as much grace and self-compassion as possible. I thank you so much as always for listening. Thank you for rating the show. Thank you for following the show. Thank you for sharing the show. Please continue to do that. And, um, oh, and also, I'm sorry, one quick announcement before I go. Um, well, there's actually a couple of things that are coming up, but I'll give you more details on some other things, but I do want to tell you that I am starting to record some episodes that are coaching sessions. So, um, I have some people lined up that they are, you know, they have a dating challenge that they are dealing with and we are going to do a live, well, you know, when I say live, you know, it'll be edited, but, um, we're going to do a session on the show. So you will get to sit in on a coaching session with me and my wonderful volunteers. And these are all people who are not clients. These are people that I've never worked with before. Um, these are all people who we are having a one-off session that you are going to hear. So, you we won't be referring to things that happened in the past that because I don't know what happened in the past because um I'll be getting to know them as you are as you are um as well and if you are interested in being on a future episode of the show then please do check the show notes because there will be a link for a form for you to fill out to just let me know a little bit about you um and just so you know um I have been getting a lot of inquiries and a lot of responses so Um, I'm trying to respond to everyone, but if I don't get a chance to respond to you, please know that I'm not ignoring you and I will get back to you as soon as I can. It just might take a while because there's a lot going on. (laughs) Um, But anyway, so be on the lookout for those episodes, which will be coming out in the next few weeks. They will start coming out. So 
stay tuned for that. And in the meantime, be well. And until next week. All right. Bye-bye.